Hi everyone, welcome back to the vlog. This is Susie from Thread Quarters. Thanks for joining me again today. Today I'm going to be talking all about how I made my Berlin jacket reversible. So if you're interested in finding out how, then keep watching. been following my vlogs for a little while you'll have seen that I um, have made a couple of Tessuti Patterns Berlin jackets this year and um, the first one I made was um, a lovely bright blue boiled wool um, jacket which I absolutely loved and, I, and as soon as I made it I knew I wanted to make another one just wasn't sure what other one I wanted to make um, and then as I was browsing my um, fabric shops that I like looking at, <laughs> one of my favourite things to do, browsing fabric shops, um, I came across this beautiful leopard print wool fabric, wool coating fabric um, on the Fabric Godmother site. I really fell in love with the fabric and thought I would absolutely love a coat in it. but. I mean it's pretty pricey, it's wool and it's Lady McElroy, I can't remember off the top of my head how much it was. And especially if you're making a coat, because more than likely a coat um, takes two metres minimum to make. Um, however, the Berlin jacket takes a metre and a half and even that I've been able to add a few inches to the length of it as well. So it's a great pattern for... Um, using up smaller pieces of fabric that maybe cost a bit more but um, you know you're getting an actual coat out of it. Now it's, if you don't know what the Berlin jacket is it, it really is just a throw on I would call it transitional piece so it's going to be great in autumn it's going to be great in springtime or if you live in Northern Ireland you could probably wear it in summer too <laughs> but you know in the depths of winter you're not going to be reaching for it it doesn't have any front fastenings to it it doesn't have a lining certainly doesn't have any interlining or additional layers of warmth in there either um, it's also a cropped sleeve um, jacket so, you know, keeping those things in mind, that is how you can end up getting it out of a metre and a half. My other aspect that I was nervous about was the fact that actually the Berlin jacket needs to be made out of a fabric that doesn't fray. It uses raw edges everywhere, basically. Um, and that is part of its charm as well. So it's not, I wasn't going to be thinking about trying to bind the edges in any way. Um, I think that would take away from the overall aesthetic of the um, jacket as well. I'm going to call it jacket and coat interchangeably by the way. The pattern calls it a jacket but I kind of think of it as a coat. There's that. So it really was something I was a bit nervous about because this was a normal wool coating and I thought oh it might fray a bit and is that going to be a major issue for the Berlin jacket? But I just had this idea in my head and I couldn't get it out of my head and so when Fabric Godmother was having a sale, I was like, bye. <laughs> so I went ahead and bought it and when it arrived, I was in love. And um, not only was I in love with the quality of the fabric, the beautiful leopard print um, design that was on it, but the added bonus that the back of the fabric was this beautiful plain camel colour. Ah. Oh, just gorgeous. You've already seen me modeling this at the beginning of the video, but so, so I'm not going to be putting it on again, but you can see there's the inside. I mean, just that in itself would be the most beautiful coat in its own right, um, but I had bought it to make a leopard print coat. But once I saw this lovely um, color here, I just thought, surely there's got to be a way that I can 
utilize this and not let it go to waste, so to speak. So I started thinking about how to make this jacket reversible. Now, as I said, it's not lined. Um, there's no binding on the edges. I decided when it arrived that with a little playing around with the raw edge, I decided it frays a little bit, but I think not enough to stop me going ahead with the Berlin jacket. I am going to say that it does fray a little bit, and every now and again I do need to get my scissors out and give it a little bit of a trim, so um, where, where there's a little bit of fraying. So I am going to have to be very gentle and careful with um, this coat. Um, just so that it doesn't get too much wear and tear. I mean, I sir, it will get a lot of wear, but hopefully not too much tear, so to speak. So, um, yeah, I hope I hope I won't regret it. So far, I haven't, and I've worn it quite a lot. Okay. So the way that the Berlin jacket is assembled is so different from how you would normally sew um, a regular seam. So it does take a little bit of time to get your head around the new process of sewing and you do need to do a couple of little tests off it. I would definitely recommend doing a few test seams before you start on your actual jacket because actually it's very hard to unpick um, boiled wool or even just wool coating. Um, ask me how I know. <laughs> but what you have to do is instead of putting you know right sides together this is the actual coat so pretend it's not um, and sewing it along there and then you know turning it that way you guys know how to sew a seam you you um, would put right sides up and you would have one piece like this the other piece you come along and set it on top overlapping over it um, by what was it three eighths of an inch not very much and then you sew about a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge that's on the top of the two layers so you've got two two raw edges sitting staggered on top of each other so because of that the inside ends up looking like the outside and that is why I thought I could maybe make this reversible. Um, the only place where you don't do that sort of seam and you do a regular seam is the um, arm seam that then goes down to your side seam. Sorry if that's not really making any sense on the screen with what I'm showing you. So yeah, if I were to put that on, the arm seam down there and then you sew it as if you're doing like a jersey top you know the way you would sew your arm and then continue on down and sew your um, side seam because you've put your sleeve on flat not in the round so the issue I had there was I would have a seam on the inside and because it is a different color on one side to the other you can see that color there now I had a couple of choices of how I was going to address this um, and one of the ideas I had was to do a um, like a flat fell seam that sort of thing but I thought this wool is far too bulky I did think maybe I could bind it in some way but again I really didn't want to add any more bulk to it and I actually really liked this stripe of leopard print that you get when the seams are um, ironed out flat and I thought let's 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 run with that so what I ended up doing just to neaten it up or just to keep it all in place is I just top stitched on either side and I'm coming close for you there so you can see I top stitched down the, the two seams there and I went as far as I possibly could so slightly into the arm but not the whole way I'm going to take it the inside out so I do have these that are not sewn down I do have full intentions on going back and slip stitching those down to the um, jacket making sure that you can't see the stitches on the other side and um, just so that it's not like catching or anything like that but for now it's actually been fine and I've worn it quite a few times as as is and just to show you what it looks like on the other side with that seam that's been stitched down it's actually a really lovely detail if you can see it there yeah so it's sort of almost like a bit of a sporty look to it the other issue I had to deal with were the pockets so the um, Berlin jacket 
has big patch pockets on either front side and there is a pocket facing so if I open up the pocket you'll see there that there is a facing and the first thing you do is you sew that facing onto the pocket piece and then you normally would actually put the facing on the outside is that right no well you can choose if you want it on the outside and inside so I chose um, to put it on the inside and then you top stitch that in place now I had to think about how I would would I have a pocket on this side as well as this side or only have one on this side and none on that side but because you're sewing this on you're going to be getting um, uh, stitching marks all the way around here and I thought that would look really odd but there was no way that my um, my personal sewing machine would sew through one two three four five layers of this fabric so I'm saying four five because I'm including the facing as well there so what I decided to do which I thought would be the easiest way of um, dealing with this is I just sewed this pocket as per the instructions and then for this pocket here you can see actually I put the facing on the outside for this one you can see like that and it's like that on that side um, I hand sewed this down I just slip stitched this all down in place um, it did take a little bit of work just to make sure that it was neat I mean it's obviously I do I am careful with this pocket when I use it it's not something I'm going to be putting lots of heavy things anyway it's just somewhere to put your hand in every now and again so I don't use it an awful lot and to me that was the best way of addressing the reversible aspect of this coat and then finally the last thing I had to think about um, were the cuffs so if I turn it the other way around the right way if you want to see want to call it that. The way that the Berlin jacket is designed is that you sew a um, sleeve facing on the inside there and then when you're wearing it you actually turn that back and um, it's sort of like a nice little turned up cuff on your three-quarter length sleeve and I really love that detail actually it's very nice. But what I then had to decide was what is it going to look like when I make it uh, on for the other side of the um, coat and I had to decide which way was I going to do the facing. Was I going to do two facings? And I was like, I'm not going to do two facings. It's going to look messy and too bulky. So um, this is what I ended up doing. I, I could have had the cuff being camel colored so that this in its entirety would be camel. And I could turn it like this and have a pop of um, leopard print if I wanted to. Or I could just... I, but the thing is, I didn't like the look of the cuff like this. I thought it looked, it didn't look as neat as when you have the facing turned to the outside. That's the facing turned underneath there. And it doesn't give as nice a um, finish here. So um, I did, if I had left this as, if I had made this camel colour, then for my leopard print coat, I would have had a camel cuff. And I decided I didn't want it, wanted a camel cuff. I wanted the whole thing totally um, leopard print. So that's what I've done and actually when I wear my coat on the camel side I do tend to leave this longer and have this um, leopard print accent and the thing is it ties in really well with the stripe and the leopard print um, pocket and that's also why I decided to make the pocket leopard print because I knew I'd be having a leopard print um, stripe down here so I was like let's just run with it and have the leopard accents and sure when you flash you have your leopard interior anyway <laughs> so I think I've covered everything um, that I needed to cover with regards to the reversibility of this coat um, there's not going to be an awful lot of fabrics out there that will have that ability to make it reversible you know with one side being printed one side being plain but if you do come across one and you think it's not going to fray um, then go ahead and maybe make your own reversible coat so even though this material was a little bit pricey I have got two coats out of it a camel one and a leopard print one 
and I absolutely love this coat. This is definitely one of my absolute favourite pieces in my wardrobe and I'm so delighted to um, have it in my wardrobe. Um, just very quickly, I'm wearing my Beatrix top um, out of like a nice black jacquard that I got from Sewers Faction. It's the one, if you saw my other videos, it's got um, little gold B buttons down the back. It's very, very cute and it's something that I pair often with my jacket. <laughs> Anyway, thanks so much for listening today and um, if you did enjoy this video then please do remember, please do give me a thumbs up, I always appreciate it. If you like my videos, as always, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of when a new video goes live and until next time, bye guys!